Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. What better place to check out aircraft control surfaces than at the airport? So here I am at the Carp Airport near Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, and I've visited MNB Aviation, a flight training facility here at the airport, and they've been kind enough to show me their aircraft and the controls on it, how it works. I'm standing in front of their twin Comanche uh, aircraft, and I'll show you the controls right now. This is the second of three videos designed to help you understand the theory of flight. In this episode, we'll learn about aircraft control surfaces and flight stability. Let's get into it. An aircraft operates in a complex environment of moving and changing air, and as such, must maintain control in three axes, yaw, pitch, and roll. Yaw refers to the aircraft's directional rotation, to the left or right, around an axis that is up and down. Pitch is an aircraft's rotation up or down around a lateral axis running from wing to wing. And finally, roll is rotation around a longitudinal axis running from nose to tail. Even though these terms were defined in terms of traditional winged aircraft, the same yaw, pitch, and roll terms are used for helicopters and even multi-rotor drones. Most traditional winged aircraft are actually designed to be aeronautically stable in all three of these axes. Stability means that if something disturbs the aircraft's flight, like a gust of wind or turbulence, the aircraft will return to its original flight path and attitude without intervention. Incidentally, there are actually two forms of stability, static stability and dynamic stability. Static stability can be either positive, neutral, or negative. Positive is the good one. It means it does return to its original attitude and negative means it actually veers off. Dynamic stability refers to how it returns to its original attitude. An aircraft with positive dynamic stability returns to equilibrium with a few decreasing oscillations. On the other hand, an aircraft with negative dynamic stability actually goes wildly out of control. What about multi-rotor drones? They can hover perfectly fine or travel in a straight line in all sorts of wind conditions and turbulence, so surely they're really stable. Well, no. In fact, multi-rotor drones are aerodynamically unstable in every axis. The reason they seem stable is because of the rapid sensor readings and corrections being made by the onboard electronics. In other words, drones are highly controlled, but they are not by design aerodynamically stable. If these sensors or computers fail, or process the sensor information incorrectly, the drone will rapidly fly out of control. And believe me, I've been there and got the t-shirt. Check out my 90 km per hour drone flyaway video to see what I mean. Okay, let's get back to traditional aircraft for now. There are design characteristics and control surfaces that help the aircraft in each of the three axes. Starting with yaw, the horizontal direction of the plane is kept stable by means of one or more vertical stabilizers on the tail of the aircraft. Vertical stabilizers, as well as the fuselage of the aircraft itself, create directional stability, almost like the keel of a boat. On the tail is a rudder surface, which allows the pilot to change the horizontal direction, or yaw, of the aircraft. The rudder is controlled by two foot pedals in the cockpit. For pitch, again, the tail of the aircraft is key. The horizontal stabilizers ensure the nose of the aircraft maintains the same attitude even if turbulence is present. This is called longitudinal stability. The horizontal stabilizers are most effective when the plane's center of gravity is ahead of the center of lift. If the center of gravity is behind the center of lift, the plane will want to fly nose up and go out of control. On the horizontal stabilizers, there are control surfaces called elevators 
that allow the pilot to control the pitch of the aircraft. In the case of this aircraft, the entire horizontal stabilizer moves and acts as the elevator. This kind of configuration is called a stabilator. The smaller part of the trailing edge here is a trim tab, which we'll talk about later. For roll stability or lateral stability, the aircraft wings are usually designed with a slight dihedral shape, like a V shape. If the aircraft rolls in one direction, the lower wing will actually have more lift than the higher one, and the aircraft will tend to settle back into level flight all by itself. To actively control the roll of the aircraft, the pilot can adjust an aileron surface on each wing. These ailerons operate in opposite directions simultaneously, one up and the other one down, to affect a roll maneuver. To roll to the left, bringing the right wing up, the pilot turns the control wheel, or tilts the stick, depending on what kind of control system they have, to the left. This causes the left aileron to tilt up, creating more drag on that side, on the left side. The right aileron tilts down, which generates more lift on the right side. This combination causes the wings to tilt to the left, and it also causes a yaw or directional change to the left. This is the reason you see planes bank during turns. Here's a great summary of the three axes, their corresponding stability names, and the primary control surface to adjust movement in that axis. We've talked about primary control surfaces, rudders, elevators, and ailerons, but there are several other bits on aircraft called secondary control surfaces. Let's quickly run through them. Flaps. These are control surfaces on the trailing edge of the wings that can be extended out to increase lift during takeoff. Spoilers. These are control surfaces on the top sides of wings that flip upwards. The effect of a deployed spoiler is to do two things. It first of all disrupts or spoils the lift of the wing and it also increases drag. Spoilers are deployed when you want to rapidly lose altitude and descend quickly. Trim tabs. These are like miniature surfaces on the edge of the primary control surface and are used to make small adjustments to the neutral position of either the rudder, elevator, or aileron and achieve better stability ideally allowing the pilot to not have to make constant adjustments to the controls. Here's the trim tab on the aircraft I was looking at at the CARP airport. Now we've talked about these controls in the context of a traditional winged aircraft, but there are lots of different kinds of aircraft design with different wing configurations. These wing configurations have a weird name called planforms, which is a strange term referring to what the wings look like from above. Low speed aircraft typically have straight wings, which may also be tapered, curved, or elliptical. Faster aircraft, like jets, often have swept back wings, which provide better stability at higher speeds. And there are also delta winged aircraft, where the wings are basically huge triangles. And of course, there's every strange variation in between. In many of these odd designs, the traditional control surfaces are combined. For example, delta-winged aircraft have combined elevators and ailerons called elevons. And we saw earlier the example where the horizontal stabilizer and elevator are actually combined such that the, the whole stabilizer moves, and this is called a stabilator. Well, there we have it. The flight control systems for yaw, pitch, and roll. Hope you found this video helpful. If you did, give me a thumbs up and a comment down below. Thanks very much. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so, and we'll catch you next time.